As we learn about storage architectures and storage technologies, we have to learn a new vocabulary. One area that really plagues students is the study of fiber channel. Fiber channel, of course, is that great protocol and set of interfaces and devices and specifications that can build storage area networks. In fiber channel, the ports, the various ports you have on your various devices are identified with very specific names and specific identifiers. And this can really haunt students. Again, all of this vocabulary they have to learn surrounding fiber channel. Let's simplify one aspect of this for you in this micro nugget. And these are the various port types that we have on these various fiber channel devices. We'll make this simple. We'll make this easy, and this is a slice out of our CompTIA Storage Plus course here at CBT Nuggets. So first things first, we notice that the fiber channel ports are indeed going to have a specific type of identifier. For instance, an N underscore port or an E underscore port. Now, this also can be known by a common name. For instance, when I see in a fiber channel network diagram an N underscore port, I immediately think, oh, that's a node port. Okay, so you'll hear the terms interchangeably. You'll hear N port or the more eloquent node port. A node port, by the way, is an end nodes port. See, this is easy to memorize, isn't it? Yeah, an end device like a host bus adapter in the fiber channel network on a particular storage system or storage array, this is a node port. We have the F port. This is a fabric port. You see, when we take fiber channel and extend it out over a whole bunch of devices in a switched infrastructure, we call this the fabric. So the ports on these switches that build the fabric are called fabric ports, F ports. Very easy, right? Now, we can... Instead of going for a switched infrastructure, we can go for a hub-based infrastructure. This is just like we had in local area networking, right? We could use hubs or we could use switches. Same in the fiber channel storage infrastructure. So a hub-based environment is what we call an arbitrated loop. So when we have a device in this arbitrated loop that's connecting, this is through what we call an L port or loop port. An N port participating in the arbitrated loop is called an NL port, a node loop port. A port that connects this looped infrastructure to a switched fabric is called an FL port. By the way, when you have a hub and you have it connecting these devices in what we call an arbitrated loop and it makes no connection to a switched fabric, we call that a private loop, but go ahead and connect it to the fabric using an FL port. So here we have a switched fabric infrastructure that it connects to, and now we have what we call a public fiber channel loop. Pretty interesting. Now, an E port, simple. This is an expansion port. So when we have our fiber channel switches and we connect them together with what we call an inter-switch link, this is done with E ports on each side. By the way, notice what type of port you have is dictated by what other type of port you are connecting to. So when we have an E port on one device, it is expected and indeed connects to an E port on the other device. Now some interesting ports, the G port, we call this a generic port, and this is a port that can be configured for any particular port type. Nice. So ports can start out on devices as generic or G ports, and then based on what they're connected to, they can be automatically configured for their particular port type. A B port is a special type of expansion port. This is used in fiber channel WAN gateways where we are extending the fiber channel traffic over an IP infrastructure, again, in a wide area network environment. B port stands for bridge port, if I did not say that already. The U port is a universal port. We see these on fiber channel switches and a universal port differs from a generic port in a very specific way. It can automatically configure itself as an E port, an F port, or an FL port. So 
a little bit more limited, the U port with its particular functionality as far as what it can auto configure itself with on a fiber channel switch. Now, you might look at this and say, okay, Anthony, well, this is pretty easy. I can make flashcards about this. It all is pretty common sense. It's going to be pretty easy to remember. I'm going to master this, have no problem in the exam or in the real world environment. But Anthony, I'm troubled by something. And what I'm troubled by is I've seen maybe in my Cisco networking environment, for example, I've seen like TE ports. Where are they in this list? Well, certain vendors will indeed expand the functionality of the particular fiber channel networking. For instance, Cisco allows virtual storage area networking and they use TE ports between fiber channel switches in order to move that vSAN traffic. Notice it is an extension of an E port and they call it a TE port. So specific vendors have the right and they do indeed take advantage of additional port types for their particular technologies to expand on the functionality and benefit that we can get from fiber channels. So be prepared for that. And obviously in our Storage Plus course, we do indeed cover these vendor specific extensions where appropriate. So let's review this real quick with a diagram and make sure you feel very comfortable on this subject of fiber channel port types. So this is a super fun game to play, kind of connecting the dots here and making sure we know the fiber channel port types. What a great way to make sure we have mastered this material. Okay, so here we go. This right here is a fiber channel hub type of device. So if this is a fiber channel hub, and we have a connection from this fiber channel hub to a fiber channel storage array, what type of port are we dealing with on the fiber channel storage ar array? Well, this is one of those NL ports, isn't it? That's exactly right. This is a node loop port. And of course, this connects to the loop port on the fiber channel hub. Now, if we didn't connect that environment to anything, we would have what we call a private loop. But we are going to connect that particular looped topology to a fiber channel switch. Sure enough, this is a fiber channel, channel switch, and this is too. We'll call this fiber channel switch two, and this is fiber channel switch one. Okay, great, so we have made that connection. What type of port do we have here to make this connection? We have a fiber channel loop port. Yep, an FL port. So here we have our L port, our NL port, and now an FL port as we connect that fiber channel hub into the switched infrastructure. Now, when we're in the switched infrastructure, or what we commonly call the fabric, we make a connection from an N port on the fiber channel storage array to what type of port on the fiber channel switch? Great job. That is an F port. We connect our fiber channel switch to another fiber channel switch using an expansion port. So there's our E ports. And then finally, a fabric port connects out to another N port. So a quick look at some of these ports as we would have in a typical fiber channel storage area network type infrastructure. And we can see that these port types are now going to be very simple for us to master. I sure hope this micro nugget has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.